stronger artistic community. My daughter is deeply involved in the arts, very little appreciation for the artistic community in this city. Mm. Why? Because that population that is getting older, they're dying. Yeah. And years of not having intellectual curiosity isn't creating those next audiences for cultural events. So the, the Alaska Native uh, Heritage Museum that's here in Anchorage, tourists go to that mm-hmm. because they're told by their tour guide they should go to that. Sometimes they hold events there uh, in the off-season. There's no intellectual curiosity to go there or to find out more. And and I think that is, is that's what I'd like to see for Anchorage is, is people who, and it, it doesn't fix crime and it doesn't fix other challenges, but people who want to learn and experience more. And by wanting to do that, then you have economic development. Then you open up markets for different business possibilities, different cultural possibilities. We don't have that. But you, you might be content to sit at home in the cold, dark night and do the same thing again and again because they don't care. Mm. You might be interested to know, Dave, that... Um, our research is partly funded by local schools here, high schools and primary schools here, because the view was um, we wanted a, or needed a different type of leader to handle um, the environments of today. And what we learned through the laboratory of Anchorage, we wish to build into curriculum for next generations so that they are acquainted with these sorts of issues and um, have different frameworks for for dealing with them. Fantastic. Anything else in your vision, Dave? Uh, You know, I'm sure there are other things that that don't come to mind, but my, my my, my biggest hope for the future of the city is sort of based on the sort of people that live here. And I think that drive, it drives an economy, it drives an, under, an understanding that crime is not a solution to a temporary economic problem. It, it, uh, it opens you up for not just talking about innovation, but, but implementing innovation with tangible results. It forces accountability of government. Uh, it's a blissfully unaware populace is a terribly unaware populace. Unproductive populace. Yeah, they're just, and that's what we have. One final question, Dave. This is a bit of a weird one. It requires you to think a little bit counterintuitively now, and that is the things you've just described as part of uh, an ideal sort of picture. What could go wrong if those things were actually implemented? In other words, is there a potential downside to those things? We're used to always seeing them in an upside light. Can you think of any potential downsides that might occur? Oh, I I think, I think awareness and, and intellectual curiosity can easily fall into the, the pitfalls of my idea is right and you are wrong Mm. and, and may in some respects add gas to the fire of the tribalism that we see in our cultures. Mm. The, my, my biggest concern is, idealistically, my, my world exists without the omnipresence of social media. You introduce a bunch of self-aware or quasi-self-aware individuals who are intellectually curious, mm. and they, we, we become an even more fractured society. And, and I could see that and, and that, 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 frankly, for what your research is and, and what any sort of, anyone's sort of goals and ideals are, we, we don't know what that's doing to us as a, as a community, as a society. We'd like to think we do, but we really have no idea. Air travel fundamentally changed people's worldviews. I can go from place to place. I could experience those things. But I was, and TV allowed us to experience things and not physically be there. Well, now, we have the ability to experience and engage in intellectual arguments that aren't intellectual. Mm. And we think they are. And the, our, our lack 
of ability, at least at this point, and maybe we develop that in the future, but our lack of ability to discern the difference between the two could, could take my vision of the future and, and turn it into a, a nightmare. So you can have, like, forgive the jargon, but an increase in the IQ, but the EQ stays the same. Yes. Mm. People don't know how to get on with each other. Yes. Even though they're all smart. Yes. Um, that covers my questions. The Sorry. The value of the corner pub would be understated. Let's go to the pub and have a beer and talk about it. In my hope, that works. In, in the siloing of social media, that's unnecessary. Why do we yeah. need to be face to face? I'll just text you. Mm. I greatly appreciate um, your insights, Dave. They've been very helpful. Um, Archana, did you have anything that you'd like to ask? No, I think we have we have covered quite quite a bit. I I really quite enjoyed it, Dave. Thank you. Absolutely. So and you're, thanks you're a lot to Darcy. This, this is Sorry. being presented as, as part of a study, or yeah. So, mm. Dave, the, the our roadmap as it stands at the moment is um, to complete the interviews with the diversity of folks across established leaders, emerging leaders. And then we aim to share what we find as well as our analysis of it. But what we'd like to do then is um, to offer some workshops in Anchorage based on um, our work, which aims to build a different mindset in the, uh, the leadership over there. And, and the vehicle for doing so is to get everyone in the one room. Mm -hmm. Now, that can be difficult in terms of timing, but everyone we ask, there is a definite willingness, no matter who we interview. Uh, and what we hope to achieve is that, based on our experience in sharing this stuff, we think that it can help to move past the current dynamics and open up a conversation beyond tribalism. Mm -hmm. But... It's not done through offering a framework or a model because if, if you just take a framework and a model and apply your same mindset to it, you're going to get the same sort of results. So this is a deeper sort of work aimed at um, fundamentally challenging the assumptions that underpin uh, the way leaders look at the world and op open that up to exposure and to critical debate because we think it's at that level that we get past where we are. And we think this story, Dave, is whilst Anchorage, we think Anchorage is a microcosm, it's representative of so many cities internationally going through a similar transition. Um, and we want to be part of that conversation. And so these workshops are what we have in mind going forward. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, anything I can do to help, you guys just let me know. Sure. What it was really rich, Dave, your frankness, uh, and, but also your insights, because um, these are, there are many moving parts to this, and, but you've pinpointed a number of the key dynamics. So we go away now and we analyse this and see um, what patterns there are in what you've said and then compare it with the other patterns that have emerged from the others. And it's really this pattern that we hope to be able to share with folks that may be at some conscious level with them, but aspects of it are probably not. Lance, I had one quick request. Uh, do you mind sharing with Dave the um, just a quick polarity uh, thinking map that you have so he knows all these four questions that we have asked him way uh, for... Sorry, I'm very curious. Pardon? Yeah, I, I, um, I, I know what she asked, Dave. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you in a moment, mate. I'm going to put something on the screen. No, no, Can I'll you see that one, Dave? No? Yeah. Yes. Is that better or worse there? It's fine. I can see that just fine. Yeah. Um, what Archana, Archana suggested that I share with you uh, one of the basic concepts that we work with, and it's known as polarity thinking. And the idea is, Dave, that most of us are conditioned to make either or choices. You know, you're either for the economy or you're for the environment.